Hello, we're here. Can you hear me? Is everything working? Great. Wonderful. Well, that sucked. Um, yeah. yeah. You think? Yeah, <laughs> that sucked. Uh, one of us drove three hours to watch that debacle, and the other one watched from the comfort of his own home. You can obviously tell who is who. Hi, I'm Logan. That's Craig. Um, Illinois basketball goes to Columbus. Craig also goes to Columbus. And uh, the Illini lay an egg, essentially, on the road against one of the worst Ohio State basketball teams I've seen in a very long time. One of the worst teams in the Big Ten this season. Uh, final score in Columbus, 72 to 60. Before we get started, uh, like, share, subscribe. Uh, if you're new, welcome. Uh, I'm sorry that this is the one you're tuning into, um, but uh, feel free to, to subscribe subscribe to our channel. Um, we'll do more of these as the season progresses, but Will the season we? is winding down very quickly. I don't know. Maybe not. Um, like, like the video. Get in the comments section. Get in the chat. Let us know what's up. Let us know your thoughts. I'm sure there's a lot of positivity to, to – uh, to go around. Um, I was really trying to be positive after the Northwestern game because, you know, Illinois came back from down 18 at half to win a game against a ranked Northwestern Wildcats team. And then uh, I don't have a lot of positive things I can say about this one. So let's just get started. Craig, um, as I said, you did make the drive. You're wearing your sincere Harris Jersey. Um, sorry for you. Sorry for you making that trip. Um, how you feeling? You you uh, you in a happy place now, or ready to explore the campus, or what's what's going on? I hate myself. Why? <laughs> why do we do this to ourselves? Why? <laughs> like now, granted, if this so coming off the Northwestern game, um, and actually I didn't realize this until I started looking at tickets. Columbus is closer to Louisville than Champaign. Like Columbus, other than like the two Not Indiana much, schools, though. it's like 30 minutes, but okay. technically, yeah. Um, other than the Indiana schools, this is the closest Big Ten school to where I live. So I was like, you know, that might be my best chance because tickets to Indiana and Purdue are like four, three, four hundred dollars. So I was like, this is my best chance to see Illinois again before because I'm not going to go to the Big Ten tournament, likely not going to be able to afford tickets to any of the NCAA tournaments. So I was like, you know what? I've been looking at this for a couple weeks and I told you and I told Christy, I was like, if they beat Northwestern, I will go because Ohio state sucks and they will likely win that game. I'm going to drive three hours, see the win and we'll, we'll have at it. Would you expect anything else? Like why would we expect anything else from this team? We, you and I have not done very well with this team in person this year. <laughs> I'm one and one. Um, oh yes. Okay. That's right. You are one and one. I am O and one. Um, so yeah, collectively we are one and two, uh, seeing the Atlanta in person. Yeah. Uh, this was obviously the game, a game they should have won. Ohio state is awful. They've lost, they had lost 14 of their last 15 games coming into this or something like that. Um, they were one of the, they looked really good to start the season and then they come to Champaign early on and they're, they, they look like a, a one of the worst teams ever, uh, or, you know, at least for Ohio state standards. And then, yeah, uh, the team that sh the Illini team that showed up today, um, is, was not a team that was ready to, you know, try and claim that double buy. Uh, the double buy is probably it's gone. gone. Um, gone. It, the double for what it's worth, I think the double buy was already gone. Um, we hadn't mm -hmm. really talked about that. I had kind of done some figuring and I'm not it was sure a that was long happening shot. Anyway. I don't know that it was. They needed to, the you needed to shot. win all of them, and you, and you needed a lot of help. <clears throat> Regardless, um, yeah, the double buy is is out the window. Illinois will now very likely be playing on Thursday. Thursday. Thursday at the Big Ten tournament. But either way, we got two more games before then. Uh, let's just go over this game um, in particular. Uh, we'll go over some of the numbers and scoring and thing. Coleman Hawkins was really the lone bright spot for the Illini. Um, did a little bit of everything. 14 points, seven rebounds, two assists, uh, two steals, and a block. Had a, a big-time dunk uh, in the first half. It kind of sparked a little bit, but nothing really came of that. Um, 11 points from Matthew Meyer. He was – Three for 10 from three-point range. Uh, 10 points from Terrence Shannon Jr. and 10 points from Jaden Epps. And that was pretty much it. Uh, Ty had six. RJ had five. Um, yeah, it was just – it was not uh, it was not the Illini's best outing. Um, I, I mean, I think the story here is 
I mean, I know this was still a 12 point game by the end, but you got to stop. We have to stop spotting teams 15 points. Like, Northwestern is that's the best Northwestern team we've seen maybe ever. And this is the worst Ohio State team we've seen in a long time. Both of those games, Illinois gave up, spotted teams 15 plus points in the first half. And you, you just can't do that. Um, there is not another team left on the schedule. There's not another game left on the schedule, regular or postseason, where you win those games. Um, you just you can't afford to do that. You have to come out. And this was a team. Ohio State played better today than they have in the last three, four weeks and I, months, if that. Um, so credit to them. Uh, they played really good defense against Illinois. Um, but you just you can't you can't let that happen. This Illinois team, we've talked about it at nauseum. They are too talented for this. And they just – they didn't come. They didn't come to play. Um, you you might have given the team more energy. Uh, the Orange Crush, who made the trip, might have given the team more energy in the game than what we saw. Well, if you remember, Illinois scored the first five points. They looked fantastic. Yeah. They came out, shot out of a cannon, 5 nothing, and then Coleman Hawkins goes on a fast break. And instead of being aggressive and going at the rim, he does a Euro step and fades away and misses, and Ohio State gets the rebound and goes down and hits a three. Could have been 7 nothing. Instead, it's 5-3. to three. That's where this team goes. Um, Brett Barons was here covering it for WCIA, and he was texting me late in the game because I, I, did, I didn't tell him I was coming, and he didn't realize I was here. I guess he saw a tweet or something. Um, and he said some kind of comment, and I said, soft and stupid. This basketball team is soft and and stupid. I said it last year. They go stupid at times. This year might be even worse. It's like, why? How many threes did they shoot? Do you have the stats up? How many threes did they shoot today? Thirty. Illinois was uh, twenty-nine. They were six for twenty-nine from three. Yes. Six. You missed twenty-three threes. Why do you keep shooting them? What What was their total field goal percentage? What were they from two? Uh, twenty-two for sixty-one field goal percentage. So 16 for 30. Better better than 50% from two, and you made six of 29 threes. Let's see. What should we try and do? Maybe we should try and get the ball in the post. That's where the comeback started because in the uh, Ohio State dominated points in the paint in the first half, and then the comeback starts because you start getting – Terrence Shannon starts driving, getting to the paint. They start getting offensive rebounds. They start rebounding the ball and getting second-chance points. I've tweeted it and I've said it all season. If basketball IQ was a measurable stat, Illinois would be the worst in Division One. They make the stupidest basketball plays sometimes, and it completely throws the rhythm off. It was a one-point game, and Jaden Epps jacked up a three. He hasn't made a three since November, and he thinks he can make a jack up jack up a three to try and get the lead. And then Ohio State goes on an 11 to one run, and it's over. Just idiotic basketball sometimes. Yeah. Uh, Terrence Shannon was 0 for 3 from 3. Jay Nepps was 1 for 6. Matthew Meyer, as I said, was 3 for 10. Coleman Hawkins, 2 for 5. Sincere Harris, 0 for 3. Luke Goody, 0 for 2. No reason for Sincere to take three threes in a game. No. He made. He did make one that they blew the whistle right before he shot I remember the first half. It was yeah, wide open that. in the first half. Yeah. Um, yeah. Ohio State was 54% from the field. Both teams were 21% from three. But, of course, uh, Illinois shot more than double the number of three-pointers that Ohio State did. Uh, Illinois had four less turnovers. 15 to 11 was the turnover uh, margin there. Um, Got out-rebounded 40 to 28. That's it right there. Nine. I mean, they did have nine offensive rebounds, which, again, is a lot of those probably came in the first half. I don't have that number in front of me at the moment. But... Um, second chance points got beat 11 to 10 there. I mean, those numbers weren't really the difference for points in the paint, 46 to 28. There you go. Um, this is an Illinois team that yes, we, we know that the three has worked for them at times, but that is not their game. This team makes their, makes their money, uh, driving to the basket transition, uh, post presence, post presence. I mean, the only true post player on this team is Dane Danger, and he's been an absolute zero. non-existent for two non-existent games. for two games. I don't know what's going on there. I don't know if if teams are uh, if Northwestern and Ohio State have seemed to to figure him out, or if there's something going on with him mentally. Whatever, uh, he's been a he's been a non-factor. He didn't even score today. He was zero for two, one rebound uh, in nine minutes. Um, 
yeah, I, I, this is the point in the season where you gotta, you have to assume things have been figured out, and clearly they have not. Uh, let's move over to the chat here real quick, um, just to get. I know we have a few people in here. Want to say what's up? Uh, let's see, Mike uh, Brandt. Unfortunately, Shannon did not come to play today. Yeah, uh, that was pretty apparent. Um, Ten points from him. Uh, but three for 12 from the field, 0 for 3 from, from the three-point line. Taron Shannon is the epitome of this team. He is inconsistent. When this when he is – when he and Matthew – when he or Matthew Meyer are on, this team is unbeatable. Uh, but that was not the case today. Um, I don't know. I mean, my the point I made – I mean, the fouls were obviously an issue for Terrence too. Um, he did foul out. He did have three fouls uh, early on in the first – in the second half. Um yeah. So that was certainly a concern, but uh, yeah, they could not um, they could not get him um, going. I got here about forty minutes before tip, and I walked in, and I didn't tweet it or I, I texted it to some of the guys. Terrence Shannon wasn't in uniform for warmups. He was wearing sweats and a t shirt for warmups, and he wasn't doing like the drills now. You know, like they get out there like an hour and a half before they're shooting around and stuff. And a lot of the guys are wearing that. But when it gets to like under 60 minutes, normally they have their game shorts on with like a tank top or or something like that. But Terrence had on sweatpants and a T-shirt. And then they all went back into the tunnel so Ohio State could do their uh, whatever pregame stuff. And then when they come out with like 10 minutes left, then he had uniform on. I don't know why. If you're going to play, why are you not going through warm-ups like normal? So maybe that was a factor. I don't know if he was a game-time decision literally 10 minutes before or what. But he was not in uniform until about 10 minutes before the game. Did you want to go into conspiracy corner for that? or I don't have a conspiracy. I just don't know why. I, I don't understand it. Yeah, that's – I don't know. I didn't. I didn't notice that. Obviously, you were there. I was not. Uh, but that is I, interesting. And I, I think it's – the slow starts might come down to him because first half, he's jacking up threes the last two games. The second half, when he's getting in the paint, is when the comebacks are happening. And I know he tried to do it in the first half today, and um, this is not a knock on the officials today, but they were – it seemed like they were calling more Tic Tac stuff but they were also letting a lot of contact at the rim happen. Yes, that is true. So he was driving, but he was getting into the lane, and Ohio State was collapsing, and he was trying to force something, and he wasn't getting the fouls called. So I, I don't I don't know. That's just my thoughts on Terrence today. I'm with you. I'm with you. Uh, let's see. Michael's here. <sighs> just too flat today. Way too many threes. Yep, that was – that was the story of this game. Uh, Michael also nice, nice studio, Craig. Yeah. Um, I just cleaned it out for you guys. Really appreciate that. Uh, Jay's in the chat. Pathetic. If there's time to actually try a zone against a team, it was today. Oh well, this team is just mediocre and going nowhere. Yep. Uh, yeah. I mean, I, we're not going to see the zone. Um, I think we can we can move past that. I mean, I know that there are probably times where it could be effective, but that's just not Brad Underwood style, and I just don't really see that happening. Uh, the team is mediocre. Yeah, I mean, this team is – I think they're better than me, mediocre, but um, they've played a very mediocre um, schedule to this point. So um, this team is still capable of, of well, causing havoc, but they're also capable of losing to some really bad teams, which they did today. I think second weekend at this point is a pipe dream. I don't see it happening. Um, I see a first round up, up getting beaten in the first round by a higher seed. I'm probably going to be the only one out here uh, pulling, driving the, steering the optimism train uh, for that second weekend thing. Um, we'll get into that later. Uh, Brant, this game was over after the terrible <coughs> three on two where Meyer just threw it away and it led to a basket on the other end. Uh, yeah, that's very, very accurate. Yeah. Uh, Michael, I, I think, oh, think Jaden Epps, he hit the three to cut it to one, like 53-52. I think maybe Ohio State went down and made a free throw or something, and then he came down and he took another three that was wasn't a terrible three, but it wasn't exactly in rhythm. You could could have got a better shot. He missed, and that's when the eleven to one run started. I think if you work the clock and if if 
I texted this in, in the group again, group chat, hashtag, um, with like 11 minutes left. Illinois had it down to five or six. And I said, if we throw a hard enough punch here, they're going to fold. This Ohio State team is going to fold. They're, they haven't had things go their way. If you throw a punch, and if Illinois would have been able to take the lead, I think Ohio State would have folded and nearly collapsed. And there comes a stupidity. You don't work the clock and you take a bad shot, and it snowballs on, on you. Yeah, you're, you're right. You're right. Uh, Michael also riding with Logan on the optimism train. No matter how bad we look, I still support this team to the end. I love it, Michael. That's what we need. Now, um, uh, what? I'm just trying to no be optimistic. One is, no one is saying we don't support the team. I'm just trying. I I'm drove just, three somebody's... hours for this. I'm swearing the jersey. I drove three hours for this. I still support the team. Yes. We just want to see more. Like this is not what we were told we were going to get this year. You you were correct. Which, that takes me to another thing that I think Brad's done with this. I think he's going to go back to he's he's done with this type of roster. Speaking of Brad, um, only Underwood could lose to the worst Buckeye oh, team in fifty on. years. I don't. Come on. I'm not. Uh, I'm not there yet. I'm not no. there on Brad Underwood. I'm still very much no. pro Brad Underwood. This is a pro Brad Underwood uh, show for now. Uh, we just came see. from let's John Gross. We've yeah. up with six years. You want, of John you Gross. want to bring back John Gross? <laughs> Have at it. Uh, Jay, keep chucking them threes, boys. Great strategy. Uh, we'll, we're still a great shooting team. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. A lot of optimism here. Um, the head coaching front. Uh, Illinois has a way of making bad teams look really good. Um, yeah, they've done that all of a sudden. Um, let's see. Anything else we need to touch on? Um, at least we didn't drop out of the top 25 because we're not in it. Yeah, we haven't been there in weeks. That's honestly fine. Um, all right, we'll just move on. Um, any optimism to take from this, Craig? Any any highlights? Anybody to anybody? I mean, I think Coleman Hawkins was Coleman was looked good. The really only bright spot, I think, for Illinois in this game. Um, he looked he looked like the the type of player he is. Um, he's uh, do it all. How many minutes did he did he see today? Oh, he probably played. I was going to say thirty-seven, 38, or thirty-eight. He 38, did not come out. 40, uh, Forty minutes. Yeah, Coleman doesn't come out much. He does a little bit of everything. He was About. really the lone optim optimistic optimism there was today. Yeah, on the court, that was it. I did want to mention that the Orange Crush got their road trip. Saw that, that they did not. Was they a, did not mention it on the broadcast. Just so you know. They didn't. Um, they did not ever at any point wow. shine a show a camera, move a camera towards the Orange Crush. It was mentioned right. by the wow. by the announcing duo. That's um, another huge negative Jay, about Jay this. Jay Wright was that, on the call. I didn't know if you know that or we knew that. Yeah, or not. this was a uh, uh, nationally televised game that Illinois laid an egg. So that's awesome as well. But um, yeah, I was sitting. Um, so if you're watching from TV, I was on the Ohio State bench in – behind the basket, um, and Meyer, I think, hit the first three of the game. I think that was the first bucket, and everyone just hears this roar. And I mean, when I say everyone, I mean at least 90% of people just turn around and was like, what? what is going on? Um, I knew immediately what it was because they were up upper deck behind behind me. So if you're watching on TV, upper deck to the left from the TV camera high camera um i knew immediately what it was a couple of ohio state fans around me were, were asking and we started talking about it but yeah the, i don't know if this was a last minute thing or if they've put on social media how this came about but yeah the crush was here which was nice um because of their whole iowa debacle a couple of weeks ago but uh that was about the only positive and i'm sure they're going home upset as well uh, yeah, I'm glad to see they made the trip. There, I did not see much about it on social media. I was honestly trying to stay off of Twitter during this game. Um, so I don't know if there was comments, but I did see, I think it was Robert Rosenthal did tweet that they were there. So um, yeah. because he, that's what, that's what, that's who Coleman was pointing up to. Yes. Coleman had that dunk in the first half and then he pointed up and I was like, what the hell is he pointing yeah, up at? That was is the crush. Family here or is he just like 
motioning up who knows but i realized after the fact that that was where the crush was sitting so uh yeah not not a lot of bright spots but it was nice to see the crush made the trip unfortunate for them and unfortunate for you uh it did not result in an illinois victory um yeah i think coleman was the lone bright spot and um how many minutes did goody did play go. i haven't looked at stats obviously not many uh seven and he was in for the last seven two minutes for luke goody yeah and then the only other thing I thought of during the game, Illinois made the run, and I believe it was the same lineup that made the run against Northwestern that he kept in for like seven minutes. Why was Sincere Harris not on the floor for it today? He was he was there for the start of it, and then, like I said, Epps hit the three to get it to four or to one and then took the other three. Why was – I mean, Sincere Harris is the spark plug. Jaden Epps is not giving you much. Why was Epps in and not Harris? Was there foul trouble? What I, I, I didn't understand that. The only thing more inconsistent than this team's play is this team's rotation. Um, yeah. I, I don't know. Um, clearly, Brad saw something. I mean, for what it's worth, Jaden did have a better game today than he did against Northwestern. Um, so that could be part of the reason why. Uh, but defensively, yeah, I agree. Um, I don't know what it was, um, but yeah, he was not on the court much. Um, fun fact, plus, you haven't looked at, obviously you haven't looked at the plus minus. Uh, there was one, yeah. everybody was negative except for Terrence Shannon. One player was negative 20. Oh, you want me to guess? <laughs> Let me take a guess. He was negative 20 in the plus minus. Dane? Nope. Somebody Coleman. had to play more minutes than that. Uh, nope. One Coleman. RJ? RJ Melendez. Yep. I Five points, he, I actually two rebounds. He bad. No, I thought he I thought he was fine, but the way plus minus works, it, it's really a non-factor, oh. but I just thought that was interesting that he was in double-digit negatives. Um, yeah. Uh, I mean, the, the spark plug for Ohio State wasn't their sensational freshman. I mean, he was good. Since the ball was great, but uh, um, Bruce Thornton, Bruce Thornton was, they couldn't figure him out. How many did he have? 20. 30 piece. Yeah. 20. Career, probably career high. Um, Coleman had a great poster, but yes. uh, Bryce Sensenball. Sensenball. Over Matthew Meyer. Meyer. <laughs> yes. Matthew Meyer's in a body bag right now. Yeah. And then. He tried to like play it off and he hustled down and then I think he fell out of bounds and threw the ball out of bounds like five seconds later. Yeah, that's when I knew it was over. The the yeah. Simpson ball body bag on Matthew Meyer. I was like, okay, I can probably leave. Yep. All right, let's go to back to the chat one more time before we shut this thing down. I know we got um, people going off, I feel like. Uh it's been pretty quiet, but there's a few things in here. Um TSJ uh, plays great in spurts. I do a few players on this team, and nobody plays a full, a full forty minutes, other than really Coleman Hawkins. Um, he plays forty minutes, but that's about it. In terms, I know what he's saying. Um, yeah, that that's just how this team is. It's just inconsistent. There's just there's nobody you can really count on to show up for to give you a really great thirty plus minutes of basketball every night, and that's the frustrating thing. Is there's enough talent on this team to win these games, yeah. but when people are struggling, it's it's hard to pull yourself out of that. Uh, an eight seed isn't that bad. Uh, do you want to be an eight seed, Craig? You want to go into your your rant about where we should be seated? No, eight nine is the worst place to be seated. I'd rather be a ten I, at this point. I'd rather be a ten or eleven than an eight or a nine. Yeah, I'm 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 beginning to re- understand your logic. Not that I didn't believe you but i get where you're i get what you're saying now i would rather be an 11 than i would rather be than an eight yeah well it's it's certainly on the table um what do you i was hoping you you by this this type of roster go back to smaller guards um i don't know this it's you made the comment i think this is a reference to the comment you made about this Mm -hmm. current roster so what would you rather see this this roster doesn't have a true point guard Right. Yes, that is a smaller guard, yes, but this roster needs a true point guard, and they need a true – I know Dane is a true big, but they need a true big. You can keep you can keep the R.J. Melendez, the Ty Rogers, the Matthew Meyer, Terrence Shannon types, um, and Luke Goodies because you need those two through four and Coleman Hawkins, but 
this team doesn't have a true Dane, I guess Dane is a true post because he does all of his work on the yeah, block and in no, the he is. But he's the only one and he's not even I feel like not even the prototypical post because he I guess he is, he is. That so there's one true post, but there's no true point guard and there's one true post. You gotta have those two in college basketball, especially a true point guard. I think those two are going to be the key this off season. And you got Illinois has Nico Moretti. They've got um, what's the point guard's name? Dre Gibbs, Gibbs Law Gibbs Lawhorn. But I don't think they're going to come in and make an immediate impact. So in the transfer no. portal, look for a true point guard that ideally can shoot the three consistently and a big. Yeah. No. I, I mean, I think that's the clear. That's the clear flaw with the roster that Brad Underwood built and the mistake, the real recruiting roster building mistake he made this off season was putting all of his point guard eggs into the combo yeah. guard basket, combo guard, freshman combo right. of Sky yes. Clark and Jay Neps, which yes. can't necessarily predict what's going to happen there. Uh, but that, I mean, I think he would probably certainly agree with you. Uh, <laughs> if you ask him, you know what he did, anything that went wrong and this is a new era. So like, I can't totally fault him, but yes, that was a mistake that that was made when building this roster and it is continuing to bite them in the butt. Um, here we go. What's the problem with this team? I'm not pro Brad Underwood. I'm saying, Hey, Chris Beard or Sean Miller, you, uh, you want to bring in Chris Beard or Sean Miller? Get that comment off. That is <laughs> so idiotic. Uh, I knew that would fire you up. Um, Let's see. There's just a lot of negativity on this right now. Um, I don't. It's just so much. It's so much negativity. The one positive from uh, from the game today was since I was at the game, I couldn't be as vocal on Twitter. Kept me off of Twitter. This is true. You could have been. You I mean, just I was. I tweeted. A, I tweeted a couple of things, but yeah, I was. Re- I was just checking it as opposed to contributing to the vial that is Twitter.com. Yeah. Uh, do you think Brad Underwood will stay away from the transfer portal next year? No, 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 um, no. They need a freshman more than anything. I think uh, you're, I mean, you're going to lose Coleman. You're going to lose Shannon. You're going to lose, um, Matt Meyer. And there will be at least one more transfer. So you got four holes to fill with three guys coming in. Yeah. I don't remember, but yeah, that sounds right. I don't know. Do they uh, have whatever. three? Do they have three recruits signed? Who's the, I don't Gibbs have Law- that. You Gibbs Lawhorn, Amari up. Hansbury. Amari Hansbury, like they, they just brought in Moretti. Um, I feel like I'm we're forgetting one, but I can't think of it right now. No, Obviously. well, Perrine left. So okay. he's he's done. Sky Clark is gone. So yeah, right now it's just Moretti, Hansbury, and, and Gibbs Lawhorn, I believe. Yes. There's gonna be spots. You gotta you gotta get a true point guard. Number and one. Moretti's already on the roster, so I don't know if he technically counts. I would say true point guard one shooter a la Alfonso Plummer too and yeah. then a post maybe. Yeah. But those three are very important. All right, let's move on. Um next up for this team, Thursday night at home against Michigan. That'll be the last home game of the season. What are you doing? You keep making noise that's really I I'm, I'm fidgeting. I fidget. Man. I'm sorry. Uh, no, it's okay. It's just it's really coming through the microphone. It was uh, a straw. Yeah. Thir- Great. I'm happy for you. Uh Thursday night against Michigan not very, not very good Michigan team, but a Michigan team that can certainly beat this Illinois team. They're playing today. Um, they are right now. I don't know what the schedule is. Um, I think right now. But yeah, that is Thursday, and then the last regular season game will be Sunday, one week from today, in West Lafayette against currently ranked number five Purdue. Although they will inevitably drop after getting beat. Do you want to go Indiana? To um, maybe but probably not. I don't want to experience the same fortune that you just had. Uh, two, I'm two surprisingly you, you in a better go mood than I – I'm in a better mood now from being at the game than I would have been at the, on the couch in my house. That's probably uh, true. How, make that make sense. How does that make sense? You're – I don't know. It's sun, It's sunny. You're, you it can just sunny. be sitting in your car. You can drive around campus. You're just – I'm just happy. I'm happy you're in a better mood. That's wonderful. Um, this place is a dump, though. Optimistic Craig for you, ladies and gentlemen. Full of sunshines and rainbows. All right. Uh, anything else from you, sir? 
the chat's no. pretty gotten pretty quiet the last few minutes, so um, I think it's probably about time to shut it down. But do you have any other comments? Go dogs! See you in St. Louis Friday. Are you going? Yeah. Yeah, you were yeah. all over the place, man. Yeah. Just can't sit still, huh? And got Baseball Beyonce season. tickets. What else you got? <laughs> What's up? Yeah, <laughs> Beyonce, Louisville. Let's go. Speaking Happy of, for you. Uh, oh. I have two Beyonce tickets to Chicago for sale. If anybody wants those, oh, to buy those. Bought those as a backup in case we didn't get any to Louisville. Okay. Well, so audience, if you're interested, hit up Craig. Um. All right. I think we're going to shut this down. Uh, final from Columbus, Ohio State 72, uh, Illinois 60. Oh, we do have a comment. Southern's currently losing to Illinois Chicago. I I almost Thanks asked our, you to check the score, but – Thanks I... to our good friend Kaylee. Um, ah. 72-60 final in Columbus. Craig was there. Now he has to drive three hours home. Thursday night next up uh, against Michigan, senior night in Champaign. That is currently only a quad two win. That's the other thing, too. Without this win, Illinois still only at three quad one wins, and their their seating is plummeting as we speak. Give us that eleven. Um, Give us that eleven. Going for that eleven. That's that's sad, and that's what we're hoping for at this point. All right, we're gonna peace out. We will see you guys probably Thursday, if not Thursday, definitely Sunday. So until then, Maybe for Craig, I'm Logan. Go Illini. Go Cubs. Peace. Jordan Walker. <laughs>